Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We have a visitor, Jerry Stewart, and uh, he is a uh, SS Stewart collector, you might say. He's got several SS Stewart instruments that he's brought with him. This first guitar is the first one we're going to look at. And it's got a few little problems, but doesn't look like it's anything too terribly major. We, I haven't really evaluated it yet, you understand. Uh, the frets have been leveled, and they're real square, and uh, the ends are poking out, and so it needs a lot of fret work yet. Um, it's got a couple little cracks in it, like right in here. The back is coming loose back in here. Anyway, he's going to be here a few days, staying at the rental retreat, and... We're going to try to fix these all up for him and get him going. You know, it, it, you can be as critical as you want to be on all these kinds of things. And yeah. I, I try to, uh, you know, kind of hit the happy medium. But if I'm looking at the neck, the neck is actually twisted a little bit like this on this yeah. guitar. Oh, it's yeah. it's um, If you look at the flat here, then this neck is set at a little bit of an angle this way. Yeah. And it's, it's even got a little bit of a little bit of a twist to it. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I, I'm thinking I'm feeling that the... It may be, told me I think it's here. actually coming loose at the top seam here also. In fact, I know it is. You know, I see yeah. it. So we got a little bit of work to do on this. We don't have the uh, bridge for it, so we're going to look in our spare parts. Some of you have sent us some things, and we might have a bridge that would work on this. I'm hoping so, anyway. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, well these frets uh, literally just chew your hand up. Oh, I mean, yeah. they are yeah, they're no, they're no almost razor work. sharp on the edges. They've it's been sharp. filed so much. Yeah, I'm gonna Some first. Of other instruments have the same problem. Yeah, so I think we. I'm not off. sure that we can use these frets yet, but I think we hmm. can. But before, yeah, they're a little worn. Look at that yeah, they're pretty yeah. worn down. They've been filed way down. I'm gonna start by knocking these ends off. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna knock the ends off first. Once we get the ends knocked off, then we'll see where we're at. I've got this all cl cleaned up up to this point here, and, and <clears throat> before when you would rub your hand over this, this would just catch your skin and just want to cut you. But it's pretty smooth now. It's still got a ways to go. Uh, in fact, there's a spot or two I can feel here that's not still not perfect, but and way better than it was. I'm telling you, this would just about take your hide right off before. <laughs> much much better than it was I can tell you for sure now we'll probably have to go to each individual fret mm -hmm. and uh, work on that well I've taken 600 now and I'm polishing up these frets yeah. I, I've gotten rid of all the um, uh, sharpness now and I think we'll be able to make this thing look really good here Well, I think that's about as good as we can do for right now. We might still need to touch it up. It's still just a little bit grabby right on the corners in a place or two, but yeah, otherwise right. it's real yeah. good. Yeah, they look nice now. It looks a lot better than it was, it's but it, gonna work, yeah. it's still a little grabby though. It's mm -hmm. just right on the corners. They get they really got filed a lot, you oh, know. Yeah. Just rubbing back and forth with the sandpaper on the corner like that sometimes knocks off a lot of that. So yeah. we got most of it off. All right, I'm going to move on a little bit here, and we'll uh, see about um, perhaps uh, gluing up these uh, broken spots here. I've cleaned up the nut on this, uh, got all the old glue and junk off of it. 
Um, it's always a good idea too to take and scrape uh, the end of the fretboard like this. You can see junk popping off of there. Usually it's old glue and stuff and just to make, I don't want to remove any wood you understand. I'm just trying to get it flat and clean so that when I put the nut back on here that it will match up perfectly to the end of this. And so you don't want any gaps on this right here because right here is where your intonation actually starts. And you don't want to mess that up. So that looks real clean and, and tight now. I'm just going to use a um, little bit of glue on that. And in this particular case, I think, oh, I don't know. It's six and one half, half does the other. All, almost all these glues will work just fine. I've got some super fatic here. I think this will be great for this. Assuming it's not uh, clogged up, and it probably is. Yeah, it's pretty well clogged. I'll have to open it up. Okay, so I'll put a drop of super fatted glue on here. Actually, that turned out to be more than a drop, but I'll just spread it around a little bit. And then we'll place it in place. This stuff sets up pretty quickly, so it won't take long. And I'm just making sure that it's nice and smooth on the ends and it feels perfect. So, just holding it there for a minute and it it, it tacks up pretty fast. I think what I'll do is just tape it in place temporarily. That should hold it. And then I'm going to move on to the cracks in the back and the top here because the top is coming loose and the back is coming loose both. Because the top and the back are coming loose from the sides here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take this tail piece off temporarily because uh, I think it'll make it easier for me to get clamps and everything on here and uh, make sure it's all lined up right. You know, I might be able to do it with the tail piece in place, but I think it's just simpler to get rid of it. It's definitely loose. There's no question about this that the top oh, yeah. is loose oh, here. Top, yeah. So it's, it yeah, we're going to clean this all out uh, best we can. I, I usually just take my exacto knife and scrape it like this, you know, and just try to clean all the junk in there out as best I can so that it sits flat. Yeah. I'm going to put the tight bond in this crack here and uh, we'll get her clamped up. I'm just using the bottle kind of like a squeegee to squeeze it back in the crack. Yeah. And that should get it back in there pretty good. And then I'll take this X Acto knife and uh, fan it back in there a little bit or try to. All right, so this this here, it's really, you know, it's one of those deals where I always tell you, whenever you take the top loose or the back loose, the sides spring out and they do not want to go back. Well, that's the case here. So this doesn't want to go in here. So I'm going to get a clamp and try to hold it there and force it in and tighten it all up at one time. It's going to be a, a challenge. So I'm going to ask Caleb to tighten this clamp up while I push the sides in. And go ahead and get her as tight as you can get her because it's still not staying in there as good as I would like, but it's you can't force them back once they decide that they're bigger than this top is. So you can only do so much, and we did as much as we can do there. Yeah. Okay, so I got that tightened down, and so we got the top glued back. We didn't get the back. Let's see if this. I can't tell if it's loose over here or not. It kind of feels like it is, but I don't see a crack yet, so I guess we're okay. I can tell that the top has shrunk to the sides or something. We gotta do all this back here yet, but we're gonna wait until that sets up. While that's going on, I'm gonna look at this neck joint. I can see that the neck joint is open, but I can't tell if it's loose or not, so I'm gonna inspect that up close. I've got the uh, Tight Bond 3 wood glue. I'm going to squeeze it down in this neck. I granted, I know this isn't necessarily the best way to try to fix this, but I'm trying to do the simple, easy thing first. Um, I don't think this guitar, you know, would warrant, uh, you know, 
especially in the time frame we have, I don't think we could take it apart and reset the neck. So let's, we're just gonna try this and see if we can get it to work. And it might, it might not. I'm picking it up by the neck to open the joint up a little bit more, fanning the glue down in there with the paintbrush. I'm pumping it back and forth. I can see it actually pumping in and out of there. In fact, it's pumping through there quite a bit. So we might get lucky, you never know. I've got this web clamp clamped up as tight as I get on this heel to pull the heel up tight. Now that that's set and now that these are set, I think I'm gonna turn it over, let it sit here kind of carefully, and I'm gonna work on this crack right here. And I think I can do that while all this other stuff is going on. Once again, I think I'll just go ahead and use the Tight Bond 3. Poking it down in there with the brush, but I'm also uh, working this joint back and forth and making sure the glue gets in there really good. I don't think it's any problem at all. I think it's completely coated. And then we'll get some wedges and try to wedge it into place. We'll start with a large wedge and then we'll try a, a thinner wedge here. That's pretty good. The only trick is if, if it's lined up or not. If it's lined up, it'll work. There, it, it's pretty close. All right, if we just let that sit real careful for a while, uh, about an hour or so, I think we're in good shape. While the SS Stewart guitar is in the clamps and drying, he also wanted me to work on his SS Stewart banjo. He's got nylon strings on it, which I've never seen nylon strings on a banjo before, but I guess there's a first time for everything. First thing I see that needs attention is that this pig head is splitting and breaking out right up in here. You could fix everything, but if you don't fix that, then the rest of it isn't going to matter because this is going to break eventually and cause you not to be able to tune it. So we got to fix that first. Well, I probably should have had that on film, but when I took this tuning key out of here, this just came off. It, it was already broke all the way across there, but I could kind of tell that already. So again, um, it's, it's just something that has to be fixed. You can't sort of fix this. This needs to be fixed or, or the rest of it's just not worth anything. I'm going to put glue on this uh, lightly. Again, because it's a break again and because we don't ever want it to come apart again, I'm going to go ahead and just use the Tight Bond 3. Uh, tight Bond would be original, would be perfectly fine. It's just I've got a lot of this Tight Bond 3 sitting here, might as well just use it. The trick here is to get it to fit back together just as tight as you can get it and clamp it really well. The clamping is the most important part of it after the glue. You get glue all over it and then you gotta really clamp it well. You can't just kinda pretend like you're clamping this. This has to be really clamped well. This clamp would be a perfect job for this because it's rubber on both sides and uh, you can really put the pressure on with this type of clamp. If you get it lined up just right, you can't, you can't really even feel the seam where it cracked. So it should go back together just perfectly. There's a little glue down in the hole now, so I'm gonna to try to clean that out. I'm just taking a wet corner of this and going down through the hole, assuming I can get it down through there. And I may have to poke it through there with something else. And it's through all the way. And that looks pretty clean in there now. That's as tight as that can be made. So we'll just let that set for a little while. And I'll inspect some of the rest of it while that's gluing up and kind of look at a few things. Like for instance, I'm gonna look down it. I know you can't tell what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna look down it and see what the neck angle looks like. And the neck angle's pretty darn flat. There's a significant, and I say significant as in a whole bunch more than it should have, underbow in this. As a matter of fact, when it gets to about right here, it just curls way back up. Just really a lot. So it's going to be tough to set this up. Uh, I can see why you might want to put the uh, nylon strings on it because it would hurt your fingers otherwise. 
He just wants it playable and we're not going to go too deep into that. Um, because of this significant underbow, it would take major surgery to fix that. Um, like probably removing the fretboard, possibly putting in a truss rod, something like that. Once they curl like that, you can, you know, you can pay all kinds of word service to it, like, you know, steaming it and pressing it back and all that, but it will come back. I guarantee you it will come back to this shape eventually. The only way you can really fix something like this, in my opinion, is mechanically. Uh, you know, all that other stuff is just lip service, in my opinion. I don't think he wants to go that deep in this, so we're probably just going to set it up as is. Well, scratch what I said about the ski ramp here and that it not be fixable without major surgery. It is actually fixable and it won't take major surgery. What happened is, I didn't see this, but the fingerboard has come loose from about here on up. Imagine that considering I said that the ski ramp starts about right here. <laughs> so obviously we got a problem. I wasn't wanting to take the strings all the way off of this, especially since they're nylon strings, but it looks like I may have to. I'm going to monkey with it a little bit off camera and see if I can clean this out and clamp it down and still leave the strings on it. That just saves time, effort, um, and assures that the strings aren't going to break. It helps ensure that, let's put it that way. I don't know. Right now, I don't know if I can get anything through there to clean it out or not. Yeah, this just goes right on through, as you can see. This goes clear through. So definitely it is loose. It's loose a long ways back here. <laughs> In fact, it may be loose all the way. <laughs> For sure, back this far, back past the fifth fret. Looks like the nut is not letting this go down. So I'm probably going to have to take strings off of it, even though I don't really want to do that, but I probably will. I've kind of concluded that the problem with this uh, fingerboard here, where the fretboard is lifted up, I've kind of concluded that this was just wedged in there too tight to let this go down. Um, once I got the nut out of there, it went right down perfectly. I'm going to uh, take the back of the X-Acto blade here and try to make sure that it's cleaned out really good, scraping this whole area. And it seems like it's scraping really clean, actually. I've got the strings off of it, uh, or at least loosened up enough that I can get to this and work on it pretty good, actually. It really looks tight now. I don't see a problem at all. So, might as well get the glue in there and get her clamped down. I'm just going to use the Tight Bond Original in this case because uh, we might need to take it apart sometime down the road. And in addition, I've got this little uh, nozzle that will help me squeeze it back under there better. Tight Bond Original comes loose very easy with, um, you know, with heat and moisture if you need the moisture. You don't always need the moisture, really, just the heat will make it come loose if you do it correctly. I'm just putting the glue in on the one side and I'm hoping I can get it to work through to the other side. If it works through to the other side, we know we've got it in there. Can we see any working out on this side yet? It doesn't look like it. So I guess I'll just switch tactics and put it in from this side also. More than adequate, more than adequate. It's, it's very good, actually. I will take my damp cloth, wipe up the extra squeeze out here, and now we will clamp this down. Quite honestly, I think these clamps are gonna be plenty strong for this, because these are very strong clamps, actually. That's assuming they open wide enough. Yep, they do. That should be pretty darn good. And you can see the extra squeeze out that came out there assuming it focuses. I'll be honest, it feels like it's pulling the fingerboard to the base side. I'm gonna see if I can straighten that up because it does look like it's pulled that way. Yep, it did pull that way. We'll try that again. Clamp it some more. See if it holds it better this time. These clamps have rubber on them, so they're soft. That looks real good. We'll let that set now for about, oh, an hour and that should take care of the ski ramp problem that we 
we're seeing. Should make it set up a whole lot better. While the banjo is drying over there with the uh, fretboard glued up, I'm going to turn my attention to the back of this guitar now and see if we can't fix the back here where it's coming loose. This uh, extra band clamp that's on here probably is helping because I think it's actually pulling the sides back in a little bit. Not a lot, to be truthful, because they don't want to go in. They just don't want to go back to where they used to be. But we're going to see what we can do about getting clamps on here and getting glue in all this. It's pretty open. It's This thing's open pretty much most of the back here. It doesn't seem to be open at the actual tail block. It's open pretty much everywhere else though. I don't know if we can squeeze this back together right here. There's no good way to get a clamp on that uh, because you know you can't clamp on this round edge. It's so far back here that even if we clamp across this way, I don't think that's going to close this. It's not, you know, it's not directly in line with the parts you can clamp. If I put one of my bands around here, you know, one of my special rigs that uh, we clamp on both ends, I don't even think that'll close it. This isn't a closable crack in my opinion. I think we just glue all this up to, to the back and then fill this with CA glue. That's about the only option I can see. I don't see this as a closable crack under the current scenario without doing major surgery. And even major surgery would have a tough time keeping that together. I'm just going with it as it is. So here we go. clean up there with some uh, wet brushes and stuff and try to get all that out of there as much as I can. I'll do that mostly off camera. As I said, I think it's a losing battle to close this crack. I don't think it's going to happen. And so I'm going to sort of close it with this medium thickness CA glue. Or attempt it anyway. We'll just have to let that sit for a while. See how that goes. May have to try it again. I don't think that really filled it all that well. Did something, it went down in there. We'll probably have to try that two or three times before we get that right. Well, this is the last obvious place that it's loose. Um, there's probably more, but I haven't looked at it that close yet. I'm just putting in a couple of wedges here to help me open it up enough to get the glue down in there. My little nozzle has sprung a leak. It's coming out in the wrong places. I'll turn this up like this and then let gravity help me force it down in the cracks there. As I clamp it up here, I'm trying to wipe the uh, glue squeeze out and keep it caught up with that as much as I can. It's, uh, you know, it's just one of those never ending battles. You just, you tighten up one thing and something, more stuff squeezes out and then you got to clean that up. And, so I just try to stay after it as best I can. I believe that'll do it. We'll let that sit for an hour or so. Well, Jerry Stewart, he brought in a bunch of mandolins. We've got uh, about four or five of them sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first one that we took out of the case. It's uh, the Lore, as you know. Uh, you've probably seen that model. This one here, he he moved the buttons to the top and set this so that the saddle could set all the way down. The action is still really high. It's uh, high enough you could throw a dog through there. There's no question. <laughs> um, yeah, it's real high. Actually, you you know, it's it would be uncomfortable to play. So what the real problem again is, is the neck angle is just not real good on this. Now, resetting the neck angle would be really tough. It's, it's really hard on a guitar and it's next to impossible on a mandolin. I would not recommend, if it was me, I would not recommend spending the money to reset the neck on this. Well, unless this just has an exceptionally good sound, which you never know, and maybe it does, I don't know. It's pretty bright, it's bright. But, uh, Anyway, uh, it's really, it needs a lot to make it perfect. 
In fact, I would think you could probably buy one for what I would have to charge to make it perfect. So um, that's why I don't think I'd recommend it. But the way I look at it, I think I can cut it down enough, cut this bridge down enough and, you know, whatever I need to do to make it reasonably playable. It isn't going to be great, but it's going to be decently playable. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go that route. That sounds good. And uh, we'll make a decent instrument out of it here in, <coughs> in maybe an hour and a half or two hours versus 15 hours. <laughs> Well, Caleb's working in the background and uh, Jerry's playing a mandolin there in the background. I've got the strings loosened up so I'm going to take this bridge out of here and see if I can cut this thing way down to make it work. But it's going to take quite a bit of cutting. I've marked this bridge and uh, I'm going to sand it now until I get rid of that mark and okay. I'm going to see if the hole would come through here and uh, if it, I mean I, I'm hoping these posts aren't going to come through the uh, bridge, but we'll see how that works. Anyway, I'm, I'm marking it again and uh, go back to the sander and we'll take off the, that mark also. Um, as long as the posts aren't showing through, I feel like I can keep taking off and, uh, you know, and every little bit I can lower it, that'll help that neck angle. Okay, this neck has quite a bit of underbow in it, so I'm going to try to take some of that underbow out by tightening the truss right here. Let's see what we can do there. Looking down it, it still looks a little bit underbowed, but not too much. So we'll take a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. I've got the action way down low now. Too low, in fact. Mm -hmm. I just have it sitting on there without the little buttons. And I thought maybe I'd see if it would work like that. And I think it's going to be a little too low. So I guess I'm going to take it back apart, put the buttons in between there and see if we can set it up the proper way. Um, I may file out a little bit of room on the saddle itself to account for the button. Um, just a little bit. And that way I think we can set this thing up pretty normally. Well, you can see that I have uh, the bridge back together. And now I'm going to take this 220 sandpaper and make the feet fit the top a little better. With the strings on there, they hold a lot of pressure down on this bridge and that makes it sand much quicker. It looks like that fits the top pretty well now. The truss rod could probably still go a hair tighter. So let's see if we can do that. And again, the truss rod, all it does is take out the underbow. It doesn't change the neck angle at all. I'm just trying to flatten the fingerboard because it's not very flat. I think it could go another hair if it'll let me. I think that's pretty flat. There's a little bit of a hump right about here. So that may cause us trouble if we get the action down low enough. There's kind of a little bit all the way across, but mostly right in this base side. So let's see what it plays like now. I think I'll just go ahead and leave the truss rod cover off for the moment because we may have to get in there and do some more. That string broke. They're pretty old. All right, I found me a, a number an 11 string to put on here. That mm -hmm. would be about appropriate. So we'll put that on. Um, I filed these post holes on the sides there because that's where it broke oh, yeah. and there's a chance that that was really sharp so that's yeah. probably the reason. We'll try this again, see if we can get it up to pitch. I didn't even have it close before when that broke so I have a feeling that it was, the string was just rusty and old. I just got done filing these edges off of these uh, holes on both posts. Um, I just took this little tiny, kind of a half round file it's, and uh, just worked those edges down. I'm pretty sure that's what's causing these to break. In addition to the fact that these strings are just old that were on here. I'm not replacing all the strings. I'm just trying to get, his, get him set up and get him going as quick as possible. It does run into money when you bring in all this many instruments, and so I'm trying to do it as quick as I can. 
Okay, I'll finish tuning this thing up and then I'll hopefully show you what it sounds like. Well, we've got her set up here. Um, it's uh, still a little bit high. Uh, I ain't gonna lie to you. It won't even quite hold the pick at the fifth fret. Um, if it doesn't hold it at the fifth fret, it's just too high. That's all there is to it. Um, I'm checking the uh, with the thin pick, sliding it in here. The base is really high. The rest of them are slightly high. So we're going to work on this up here first and then see if we can't find a way to get it just a little bit lower yet and then it'll play really good. Mm -hmm. Well, I uh, worked on the nut up here, got the strings lowered and uh, I tuned it all back up and it's very playable compared to where it was because it was really high before. And the action up here is very good, but the truth is I think the truss rod has still got a little bit more under bow in it than it needs. I think we can I think we can straighten it out a little bit more. So I'm loosening the strings yet again. Hopefully I don't break them again. I'm gonna now tighten up the truss rod some more. I think that could make the difference because it's holding the pick at the fifth fret, but I think if we get this tight enough, it might hold the pick at the seventh fret because there's a pretty big under bow right in that area. The truss rod was really pretty loose in this thing and probably for a very long time and that's that's what let the neck under bow there a little bit too much. I think that's about as much tightening as I probably feel comfortable doing. It, it looks pretty flat but it's still got a little bit of a hint of an under bow. If I can get it back in there one more time and just turn it a little bit more yet. That's about all I feel like I should do. I'm afraid I'll end up breaking something if I go much more. And we'll tune it back up one more time and this time we should be able to play it Look what have it, I uh, broke another string on this, uh, tightening this up. So I'm gonna file this again and hopefully get rid of the whatever burr or whatever sharp edge is breaking these strings. The other one didn't break this time, but this one did. I'm just trying to get it cleaned up here. It's a little difficult to do sometimes. You can, sometimes you just, the least little touch will fix it. Other times you've got to do a lot to get them to quit breaking strings. I'm going in on the inside of the hole this time a little bit and filing. Rounding it off. That's what you're doing here. You're just rounding it off. It feels real good. I think that'll probably work. So let's put the other string on here again. This is the, uh, I broke three strings now on this mandolin. Typically I don't break any. What you saw me do there was just take this little tiny grinder and grind off those posts that, so that they're flush with the top of the saddle. That way your hand won't catch on them. Let's see here, we're gonna put this back on and I think we're in tune, so let's just check the tuning one more time and then we'll play it for you. It's not the perfect setup, I'll be honest, but it's not bad. It but just it wants to hold the pick there at the seventh fret. It just don't quite get it done. It's real close. I mean, like it's right on the edge of holding it. So that's pretty good. I mean, you're only talking forty thousandths of an inch high there, so that's not too bad. I would say the setup on it right now is probably, you know, eighty percent, uh, and probably better than eight out of 10 mandolins you'll find in a music store. So it's pretty good, it really is pretty good. You can tell it's got, it's got a pretty good punch. It's, to be honest, it's set up just about like I set mine up because I set mine up just a little bit higher than average just because I play so hard. But uh, honestly, it's just about, just about 
just about as good as it gets, especially when you consider the very low neck angle that's on this mandolin. So it's really, really pretty good. The only other thing that could be done to make this one play a little better, in my opinion, would be to go ahead and scallop out these frets. If, uh, if a person hits that with their pick, you know, that's kind of annoying. So that, because we've got the action so low now, um, you can actually hit that occasionally, where before <laughs> there wasn't much chance of hitting it because it was so high. But anyway, uh, otherwise that's in really, really good shape. the next day on this SS Stewart guitar and I have uh, taken the clamps off and it sounds like Mr. Stewart himself is coming in the door so anyway we're got it uh, looking pretty good um, we'll move on and I'll show you what the next step is these frets are still usable. They've been filed a lot and for some reason they're still sharp on the very edges and I don't know how come. I've never really run into it quite like this before. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this little three-cornered file, it's a little small file, and I'm just running it along here and letting it catch up underneath there to uh, get rid of the little, it's like a burr, and it seems to be working. You got to do what you got to do on some of these things, you know. You run into all kinds of issues that you just never see. Anyway, I'm going to work on that and keep seeing if I can come up with things to keep it from grabbing your hands because it does grab in places. Even though I've sanded it and got them really rounded off and smooth, I doubt this is going to change the world, but I think I will go ahead and rub this uh, tailpiece down with some of the semi-chrome. I, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference to be perfectly honest with you because it's pretty rusted through and there's not much chrome left, but you never know. It might make it look better at least. Well, I turned it pretty dark pretty fast, but uh, I don't see as it's really changing the look of the metal that much, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping it would brighten it up and not look so dull. It's making it a little shinier, maybe you can see this part shiny compared to this part, but it's not, it's not doing very much. I kind of was hoping it'd do a little more than that. My wife's out there running the bobcat, sounds like. She loves to uh, burn fuel, and since fuel prices are just constantly going down, that's a good thing, right? For a two-family... Uh, family here on this little farm. It's amazing how much fuel we burn in a month. I'd put it up against almost any family around. You'd be surprised how much gas and diesel we burn in a month. It's amazing. But on the other hand, at least I don't have to go out and cut the grass and do all that other stuff out there that she's doing. So. I guess I can't complain too much. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get. It's not much improved. It's just clean. That's about all I can tell you. I was actually hoping for a little bit more. Sometimes you do get a little more on these kinds of things, but this one here is pretty corroded. So I'll put that back on and we'll start stringing this thing up. Mr. Stewart had 
some classical strings uh, that he was considering having me put on here and I, I kind of pushed for these uh, extra light uh, phosphor bronze strings. This is a steel string guitar as you can tell by the post, the tuning post for one thing. But uh, I just think this guitar wouldn't really vibrate much with uh, classical strings on it. So I'm not going to show putting all the strings on it, but uh, I'll show you what it looks like as I get, start to tune it up. As with mandolin bridges, I put down a piece of uh, 220 sandpaper and then I rub the bridge back and forth until it starts making the best contact possible doesn't take much rubbing. With the strings on there like that, it keeps the pressure on it so it really does cut it faster. If you try to do this by hand without the strings on it, it takes a lot longer. Now I'm going to separate these strings, try to make them even, and put some marks in this bridge. This is basically a new bridge, a uh, new saddle, everything. Uh, this was one of the donated parts that you all sent to me so I'm not charging him for this this I'm just giving it to him and it looks like it goes real well with this particular guitar so just about the perfect bridge for it I'm just going by eye here trying to get the strings even just really truly all by eye and then I'm just going to take a real tiny um, tri-cornered file here and just put the least little bit of a notch in each one of those locations just to keep the strings in place. Doesn't take much at all. The trick is you want your notch angled back toward the tailpiece here so that the last place the string touches the saddle is right on the very front edge. I could just use a regular nut file for this and that would be fine too. I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll just go ahead and get her tuned up. I'm looking at the action. The action looks pretty darn good, so I'm just gonna go with it where I've got the bridge set and we'll see how that turns out. I've also often said you can put oil on your tuning keys and you don't have to worry about them slipping. It will not cause them to slip. So I'm going to put a little oil on these because they're a little bit uh, stiff. They're not terrible. They're just, could use a little bit of lubrication and that'll keep your tuning keys in better shape too. They won't wear out so much. If they're, especially if they're a little hard to turn, um, that means that they're just grinding against one another and you just need to give them a little lubrication. Otherwise you're just going to wear them out. And the oil won't hurt anything if it gets on the wood. My friends, I believe I've got the SS Steward up in pretty decent shape. Is it perfect? I will tell you no. Uh, there's a pretty big hump right here, and if you go to the 12th fret and, and up this way beyond the 12th fret, it's going to buzz. But up to that point, it doesn't really buzz much. Um, I've got the action crazy low. It's really low. I'll play it for you here and let you hear what it sounds like. The customer's gone right now, but he's already said he doesn't go up the neck. He just plays up there at the, you know, cowboy position kind of chords. And uh, so I think this will satisfy him. He just wanted it playable. And I think we've got her playable again, got all the busted parts fixed. So here's a little bit of what she sounds like. Got a pretty decent little sound this style guitar, of course it's totally different than a Dreadnought. My friends call me to God and I answer when they call. My friends call me to God and I answer when they call. I got one in my boot tops and one in my overalls. Well, I rode some freight trains, rode some aeroplanes. Yeah, I rode some freight trains, rode some aeroplanes. And I don't care. 
travel Cause I get there just the same Get me water when I'm thirsty Or a bottle when I'm dry Water when I'm thirsty Or a bottle when I'm dry And play me sad music When I want to cry The old cowboy guitar and the cowboy song to go with it. Well, sort of a cowboy song. <laughs> Anyway, hope you enjoyed the setup on this little SS Stewart guitar. Uh, I think the customer's going to be quite happy with this considering he's kind of a, I guess, has a soft spot for them because his name is Stewart also, you know, and I can understand that. Well, now that we've knocked the guitar down, I think we'll turn our attention back to this banjo again and see if we can get it playable. Again, the idea is just to get it playable, not to go to any particular extreme. I'm trying to put the uh, tuning keys back together on this, or the tuning key in this particular case. I'm trying to get the ferrule to fit down in the hole, and it's pretty tight, and that, I have a feeling that's what broke this off to begin with, because that's exactly across the hole, so I just don't want that to happen again, so I'm kind of widening the hole here uh, in the area of the brake. You know, on the width, I guess you'd call it the width this way, so it doesn't push the piece off again. It wouldn't even start in there when I, when I started this. Now it's going in there most of the way, but I'm afraid it might still be a little tight if I jam it down in there. So I think I am going to take my Dremel tool and just work on the two opposite sides here. I think that'll make more sense than forcing it in there and breaking the piece again, because it, it could potentially break again. I'm going to be very delicate with this and just barely touch it, because it's, it's, you can take off way too much with this really fast. can almost force it down in there now by hand and I think that's good as long as it goes in there snug by hand rather than having to force it in there yeah I think that's it I think we got it just exactly right yep I think it's bottomed out um, I don't actually technically it may not be completely bottomed out I'm gonna see if I can take this and push a little bit harder I think that's good so that way we didn't f really force it in there like it, it, it's probably been forced all this time and that's probably why it broke. Now I'm not honestly sure which way this goes. Um, if I could see one of the other ones, it looks to me like the brass is up because this little washer has brass and plastic and it looks like the brass side is up. Whoops, I thought it was stuck together. It was originally, but brass and plastic. So the looks like the brass is up. So that's what we'll do. And slide it down through here. Looks like there's another plastic washer here on the underside. I think there might be one more part that's missing. I, actually, I think there's supposed to be another washer here that this didn't seem to have. I don't believe I lost anything. I'm pretty sure I had all the parts with it. I think I'm going to see if I can find, find or fabricate another very thin washer to go on top of that plastic because I can see these are all sticking up a little bit and when I put this one on here it would not be sticking up it would be rubbing the plastic.
and I don't think that's the way it's intended. So I'm going to see what I can do about that. In my spare parts bin I found a little washer that would almost work except the hole's just a teeny bit too small. Now how do you drill a hole bigger in a teeny little washer like that? Well I'm going to take it to my metal lathe, chuck this in the metal lathe I hope, and poke a hole through there just a slit just needs to be ever so slightly bigger. Ah, it's so close. So just the least little bit bigger hole will make this work and I think we can manage that. I think I was successful chucking that up and drilling the hole out. Now I, I haven't tested it to make sure it fits yet. Oh, it just barely fits. I w went on the smaller side of, bit of the drill bits because usually the drill bits drill them out larger than they should. And so I thought, well, I'll go a little bit smaller and it's just about the right size but it's a little bit tight so I'm just going to take this little round file here and just work it through my fingers and see if I can't just encourage it to go on there. Oh it's so close give me a break. I guess I could go to the next size bit but doggone it I just thought that would work. It usually does. Oh it's so close. So rather than go re-drill it and set it all that back up, I'll just take the little round file here and just work it around a couple of times. I'm pretty sure it's, it's so close to going. I feel like it's just about got to go. There it is. It was so close. And it's just really about the perfect size. And I feel a lot better now that that washer is in there. Basically, for you, the, if you don't know about these kinds of tuning, tuning keys, they're friction. And so if your tuning key is slipping, then you just tighten this screw just a little bit. And a little bit goes a long way. You don't go cranking down on it. Just a little bit. Just give it a little, like, quarter turn or, you know, eighth of a turn, something like that. And you just tighten them up lightly. And that tightens up the friction. That's why those washers are important in there. Anyway, that's pretty snug now and it turns, um, but if it's not tight enough, I'll just tighten up that screw just a little bit. So let's try stringing this thing back up and see if it works. Caleb and I were just talking about the fact that, you know, it takes a machinist really to make a part like that because you're drilling a hole in something that's almost the same size as the outside diameter. I mean, the washer ends up being very tiny. It's crazy. So we were thinking about, you know, what other shop could have actually done that. Fortunately, I have a metal lathe, so I could do it. And, and in fact, it takes a very small metal lathe to do that. So fortunately, I had a small metal lathe, because if you had a large metal lathe, it would eat that little tiny part up, you know. Anyway, make a long story short, then we were saying, but you know, if a shop specialized in banjos and they were a machinist, You'd think they'd be smart enough to know, <laughs> if they were machiners, you'd think they'd be smart enough to know they don't like banjos anyway. Just another banjo joke. <laughs> it's like a written law, especially in bluegrass, that you have to make fun of the banjo and banjo player. Okay, so now I need to try to get this string back on here. I don't really want to replace his strings, unfortunately even though they probably need it. These are all nylon and I really just don't want to deal with it to be truthful. So I would just soon make this work if it will. And the truth is, I'm not sure it will. There it goes. We might get it to work, but I can't guarantee anything. It's on there temporarily. Now the problem is I still need to make or clean up this nut slot here. I've cleaned up the nut itself and got it real clean, but this, this isn't cleaned up yet. So I'm going to take something and just try to scrape this flat. Actually, it's not too bad. I thought it was worse than it is. I think that the nut is a little wide for the slot, so I'm gonna to try to make sure all this stuff is off the end of the fingerboard here, because I think there's a lot of glue and buildup here on the end. 
try to clean all of that build up off so that the nut can fit in here. Well, the truth is this is just going to be a hair too wide for this slot, but fortunately I have my little thickness sander that I can run this through, and I think I can make it just right. Well, I made myself a little holding stick just with a slot in it to slide this through my sander, and it made it the exact right size. I mean, it's like it's fit in there perfectly tight. You could turn this over, it's not going to fall out. So we could glue it, but because it's sitting in there so tight, I'm tempted to just let it sit there. The other issue we have with this now is that it looks like the neck angle is really going to be high. If I can, I'm going to try to put a little shim in here, and that way it'll change the neck angle. You can do that a little bit with this uh, configuration here too, but for the most part this just tightens it up. So I think I'm going to try and loosen this and get where I can get a shim in there and put a little tiny shim in there and then I think it'll be just about the right angle. We'll start with that idea anyway. This screw is a slotted screw and it's at such an angle I can barely get to it. In other words, the head is pointed I mean, the, the end of the screw is pointed up, the head is down, so I can't get my screwdriver in there very well. So that ought to loosen this a little bit, I think. Yep. And now I can probably get a little, force a little shim in there. Uh, probably just a little thin piece of wood as a shim, and that'll get the neck angle much closer. Ran this piece of walnut through my thickness sander, and Probably this thinnest piece would be all would be sufficient. So I'm just going to cut it off to about the length of the back of the fingerboard here and pry this down if I can. And uh, I think I'll loosen the strings just a little bit to do that. Basically, I'm just putting some pressure on this and hopefully I can get this in there. This is pretty thin, but it may not be thin enough. Hmm. Maybe not. Might have to loosen up something some more yet. Caleb, I need some help. So Caleb's going to come over here and press down on that neck. Right about there. Just hold it there for a second. Okay, so we've got a little shim in there now to take up the space. I think that's going to be sufficient to make it play pretty good. Is it perfect? Probably not, but he just wants it playable and he's not too particular about all that and we could spend hours and lots of money on this and I don't think that's the goal. That looks, that looks pretty good in terms of Height now. The bigger problem is there's barely any clearance over the head itself. But I can't do much about that, I don't think. Let me see how to tune this up and uh, I'll show you what it sounds like. The customer's not here right now, and honestly, I googled tuning a five string tenor banjo and I don't see any hits on that, so I see tuning a tenor banjo. But I'm not into tenor banjos. I'm not into that sort of scaling instruments. So therefore, I'm just going to wait till the customer gets back and we'll see how he wants this tuned because I have no idea. And plus, there's many alternative, alternate tunings for these kinds of small instruments. And this one has nylon strings to boot. <laughs> so I have no clue. I'm not even going to try to guess. <laughs>